Ah, the Roost, the most asked and probably least used building in New Horizons. Hey gang and welcome to another Animal Crossing video, I'm Crossing Channel and I love discovering all of the different secrets there are to find in the game. There are so many different ones and especially ones related to the special characters and NPCs that we have in the game. And a ton of these were actually introduced in the 2.0 version update that we got in November with lots of characters from past games that we know and love making their return. So I thought it'd be a fun idea to go over 8 NPC secrets that you might have missed in Animal Crossing New Horizons, so let's jump into this. In at number 1 we have Dr. Shrunk, the funniest or the least funniest character depending on your preference. I personally love Shrunk though and I think he is absolutely hilarious with his kind of dad jokes, that's definitely my vibe. Either way, Dr. Shrunk will mention a certain character who has been forgotten by the sands of time and this is of course his comedy mentor Frillard. Frillard was only seen back in Animal Crossing City Folk really, so it's been a really long time since he's been in the games and he's honestly one of the most forgotten about characters, so it's really nice that Dr. Shrunk still makes a reference to him after all of these years, even if he doesn't get referenced by name which is kind of a shame. Speaking of references to past games, in at number 2 we have Blanca mentioning the fact that you used to be able to draw on her face. This feature was one of my absolute favourites in the old Animal Crossing games and I'm sure many of you remember this, where you could draw all kinds of crazy things on Blanca's face. In fact, that was the character's main gimmick, that they had a blank face and you could draw whatever you wanted on it. I miss this feature so much, I wish it had returned in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Today's video is sponsored by Love Link. You can go ahead and download the game for free using my link below on your mobile device or tablet. I'm also seeing a giveaway for a $25 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card, so stay tuned to learn how to enter. Bob has been trying to find love for months now, but the bugs in his floorboards keep putting people off. Thankfully, Lovelink is an interactive virtual dating experience where you control your own romance story. Lovelink has a perfect match for everyone, even Bob and his floorboard bug. Also, Lovelink just launched a brand new update. You can now create your own personalized avatar, you can customize almost anything from hair, outfits, and much more. You can also match with Cupid, so don't let love fly away. Now, how about we try and find Bob a date? Okay, so this person could be a match for Bob, but I don't think that Bob likes dogs, so I'm gonna have to pass on this one. This guy might be named after Keanu Reeves. You know what, I think I'll swipe right. So I don't know how Bob feels about bad boys, but I guess he is kind of one himself, so you know what, maybe this could actually work out. The cool thing is that whilst you're chatting your matches, you can make certain choices in the conversation that can lead you on different paths. There are over 85 characters with different personalities and different stories, so the options honestly are endless. To reward you for playing the game and supporting the channel, I'm giving away a $25 Nintendo Switch eShop card. To enter, all you have to do is download the game using my link in the description, screenshot yourself with free character interest boxes unlocked on any one character. As you progress your relationship with a character, the blank boxes will be filled in, so I challenge challenge you to fill in free boxes total for one character and send to me on Instagram at Crossing Channel. The winner will be picked in a month from this video going live. I hope to see lots of you enter and thanks to Lovelink for sponsoring the video. In at number 3, you can invite DJ KK to the roost as a separate character and he'll even mention regular KK, kind of confirming that they are the same character but not directly. Now DJ KK makes a much bigger role in the game now obviously because he takes part in the Happy and Paradise celebrations right at the end, but you can invite him to the roost which in a way does kind of hint that he might be a separate version of the character rather than just a persona. Either way, he's not going to confirm it to us sadly, so we're just going to have to theorize about it ourselves. For number 4, let's leave the roost for a moment and head to the airport. Now if you head in here around 4am and an island broadcast is about to happen, then you go talk to Wilbur, he actually won't let you go anywhere. He won't let you visit another island, go on a mystery tour, whatever you'd like to do, he will not let you do it until you've seen Isabel's broadcast. Now I don't know if this means he's just some kind of super fan of Isabel, or maybe this is just a clever way of disguising a limitation within the game. But either way, it's neat and this was actually something that was only introduced in the game recently. So it's cool that there is this sort of change that I feel like a lot of people would never notice. I mean, it is so circumstantial that you would need to be in here at this specific time trying to leave your island. I reckon most people probably don't play the game at 4am even if they do time travel. But if you are at some point, then head in there before it hits 5am and you should be able to get this sort of rare interaction with all which I really like. 
For number 5, we're inviting Tortimer to the roost and he'll actually show up not wearing his trademark hat. Now from what I can tell, this is the only place in the game where you can see him not wearing it and he does look very odd. He kind of looks like a pear, but I don't know if that's exactly what they were going for or it's just a coincidence. Either way, it's definitely an unusual look for him, but it's kind of nice to see the characters in different ways after we're so used to seeing them look the same throughout basically every Animal Crossing game. He will also mention the fact that he used to be mayor and he'll even mention your old towns as well, which I really like. He'll specifically make mention to, I guess, Animal Crossing Wild World or City Folk, since he says about a cafe in the museum, which of course was only a thing back in Animal Crossing Wild World and City Folk, the cafe had its own standalone building back in New Leaf, which actually we might hear more about later. For number 6, this one is related to CJ and Flick. Of course, these two are inseparable, you always see them together. If you invite CJ to the roost, or you invite Flick to the roost, they will bring along the other one, which is really cool, so it's a nice way of quickly meeting the both of them. We always hear these two talking about each other, but before the 2.0 update and the roost, you could actually never see them together at any point in the game, which is kind of crazy to think about. Now with the roost and being able to invite characters in via amiibo cards, you can see so many different combinations of characters that you'd never ever get to see before, despite the characters being linked throughout the series. It's really interesting to me, and I just love the fact that we can get to see all these characters interact in different ways. In at number 7, this one is related specifically to Timmy and Tommy. Now, for most of the younger characters in the game, if you invite them to the roost, instead of having a coffee, they'll actually have a biscuit or a cookie, I guess, and this is because they're basically too young in order to drink coffee. However, Timmy and Tommy happen to be the exception to this for some reason, and they will bring along coffee, and they can even come and pick it up at the counter anytime they want as well. Now, I guess the reason for this is the fact that Timmy and Tommy are a bit more mature than some of the other characters in the game. For example, they run Nook's Cranny, and they've done a bunch of stuff in the past games as well. Maybe they're even older than they look, and they just haven't grown very much since we've known them in the games. But it is kind of interesting that so many of the other younger characters, including ones like Daisy May, who, you know, do work around your island and do tons of independent and hard work, they do not drink coffee. It's only Timmy and Tommy. So maybe that does kind of imply they are a bit older than we first thought. In at number 8, you can invite Isabel to the roost as well, of course, and she will actually make a direct reference to your town back in Animal Crossing New Leaf. Now, New Leaf is a fan favourite, so many people played it and still love it to this day, and even, you know, still play it to this day, so it's really nice that Isabel would make a reference to the game where she originated from. And like I mentioned with Tortima earlier, so many of these different characters which you can invite will make a reference to the past games that they were a part of, something which I really love seeing. I think it's so great that the past games have kind of been honored in this way throughout the sort of interactions you can have with these characters. So definitely invite as many as you can and see which ones talk about past games. It might surprise you because it is just jam full of nostalgia for old Animal Crossing fans, or I guess sort of little tidbits of information for those of you who maybe didn't play these older games, because I know so many people started with New Horizons for the very first time. There are so many more secrets to discover in Animal Crossing New Horizons, but these are going to be the ones that I go over for today. But definitely drop a comment down below if you've discovered any other secrets that I should know about in the game, especially related to the NPCs. I'm sure there are so many more, and honestly, it's kind of my favourite thing about Animal Crossing New Horizons now, discovering all of the sort of little hidden details which Nintendo tends to tuck away a bit more, but that just makes them super fun to find. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to comment Bob's Gang down below so I know that you did. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and turn on those channel notifications for more Animal Crossing New Horizons videos. I want to give a big thanks to these channel members for their continued support of me and what I do here on this channel. If you want to become a channel member, click the join button down below the video or the link in the description to learn more. You can get a whole bunch of cool perks like exclusive emojis, a badge by your name, access to our members only discord and our members only podcast too.